Hello you multi Monashi Mountain malt mates, miners. Uh, welcome to Ralphie Review 920 Extras in the Bothy where I give extra additional overview, opinion, perspective content over and above specific whiskey and other quality spirit reviews. And thank you to Wayne Lundberg for that malt mention. Thanks Wayne. Um, and I've just re reviewed a single malt whisky in Ralphie Review 920. <clears throat> Excuse me, slight hiccups. That's the whisky that caused it. It was hot whisky. It was burny whisky. And it wasn't the alcoholic strength, it was the quality of the alcohol. Um, it wasn't good. And it's really turned me off Glen Grant as a brand for the foreseeable future, which isn't a problem because I've got plenty of other liquors to choose from. There's never been so many as there is now that are available to us all, wherever we are. Although I have to caution you that if you're in Australia, um, I would suggest you have a look at what's around you rather than the very expensive Scotch whiskies. Uh, for example, Beanley, Beanley rum. I'm going to be reviewing that shortly, the next few weeks. Australian five-year-old rum. Fantastic stuff. Far better than the number of whiskies that I've tasted and reviewed recently. Um, and um, if you're in Canada, seriously, have, look for what you've got locally, which are going to be cheaper for you and are going to deliver a good, ex positive experience. Um, all the Canadian distillers need to do is actually bottle a higher strength, bottle more single cask, and put them out accessible and affordable. It's not rocky science. And if you're in Scandinavian countries, Norway, where everything's expensive, well, <laughs> well I look forward to seeing, you know, a Norwegian distillery or two, but you never know. Um, when we're buying whiskey, the landscape has changed from a few years ago because whiskey's changed. The accessibility, the availability, the prices, the quality of what's bottled. I've seen this firsthand being at the centre of the Scotch whiskey culture uh, and being very close to being in Scotland for most of my life and it's been a fascinating journey the journey in itself even putting the actual physical whiskey consumption aside it's been a very rich rich experience of landscape and characters and stoic buildings and beautiful views and long glorious days ending at the fireside with a dram and a glass of good quality beer. That, malt mates, I'm just telling you right now, that's quality of life. That is serious quality of life. It's not how much you've got, it's the quality of how little you can manage with. And I wanna share, I wanna share just a small overview of changes. Carrying on from my extras last time in Ralphie Review 919 where I talked about the quality of whiskey in terms of continuity of flavour or continuity of quality because making single malt whiskey in pot stills is a very delicate, skilled process. It's enormously skilled, actually, particularly when it comes to matching with casks, sourcing of the quality of casks, reworking the casks you've got, knowing what casks you need and what ratio for what age of whiskey you're looking to produce, how you season your casks, how you maintain your casks, the enormous value of actually having a cooper on your premises who's time served with experiences with experience and just can get on with it because they know exactly what they're doing that is gold dust to any distillery anywhere in the world that produces brown spirits 
would matured spirits. And I really want to emphasise now that when distillers are putting caramel colourant and chill filtering their whisky, what they're doing is they're trying to fudge the vari variability due to the cask policies and other cost constraints they face in order to give the appearance of consistency in their brand. Now, when they are catering to a passive consumer, it's no problem because the consumer is judging that bottle of whiskey in exactly the same way that they judge a Big Mac, a can of Coca-Cola, or a packet of crisps, chips, if you're in the US. They're seeing something which is utterly predictable, utterly the same as the last experience. And the way they do this is to actually remove the experience in terms of sensation of smell and taste and replace it with the branding, the visibility of the branding so that your sensory perception is on your eyesight rather than your smell and your taste. That's the way the passive consumer operates, the lazy consumer. Now this sounds terribly snobby, but I'm not being snobby, I'm just calling it out as it actually is. I'm being realistic and I'm not criticizing it. I'm just showing as it actually is because you need to be clear that you're no longer a passive consumer with the money that you're spending on the quality spirits you buy, whatever spirits they happen to be. Bourbon, rye, rum, whiskey, Irish whiskey, Japanese whiskey. And this makes us the proactive informed customer. And what we're spending our money on is to feed the experience of our, not our eyesight so much, although we do like the familiar of the appearance of brands, but our sensation of smell and taste, which are emotional, subconscious driven sensations, very, very primitive sensations. The two sensations that we have that are chemoreceptor sensations, smell and taste. And as such, the complexity and the fantastic array of smell and taste that you can get from matured brown spirits is unrepeatable in any other consumable context. Bar none. Sure, you get some amazingly complex white spirits like a rested rum or a grappa, for example, but they're not the same, they're different and all the better for it because they're part of the variety. But as proactive consumers, we, we've got to identify clearly the two variables that we can get in the whiskey we buy. And one is where it doesn't taste quite the same as last time, but it's still good quality for what it is. And you'll find this with Springbank. And by the way, I'll be the first to tell you, Springbank doesn't produce 100% great bottlings all the time. No distillery does. Although I have to say, Arden are doing a pretty good pretty damn good job of it at the moment with their entire range. My goodness, they've got some serious skills at that distillery and it's showing bottling after bottling. This is part of the knowledge. It's not so much which, which whiskey you should buy next, malt mates. It's what's my list of distilleries that are doing it better than the others. It's like investing in the stock market. You don't invest in the stocks, you invest in the companies. You invest in the companies which clearly show and are visible that they've got the right team doing the right thing in the right way all the time, time after time after time. And this is exactly the same with, with whiskey distilleries. And it's not just in Scotland, it's all around the world now. But it takes time, it takes experience, it takes a range array of skills to learn all this. And you can only learn a little bit at college and university. It's the practical skills and the actual raw talents 
of the individuals that make up the team involved in production, maturation and delivery into the market. I know I'm often cited, rightly so, that I'm slagging off marketing. I never slag off marketing departments. I slag off what they do. But the flannel and the superficiality. But they're doing a job and their job is to appeal to the passive consumer who needs to be entertained. Proactive customers don't. In fact, we get increasingly irritated at the flannel because we can see through it. We've heard it before and it no longer works on us because we've graduated. We're doing our own apprenticeship, our apprenticeship from consumers to customers. So you have two types of delivery, the consistency of quality, but variable, slightly variable, marginally variable. How do I know this? Well, look at all the talk about batch additions, bottling codes. So many people are talking about them now because bottling codes and batch additions really, really matter. What's your bottling code on this? When was it bottled? Which year? Which time of the year? And which market did it go to? That was a good version. Why? Because the percentage of more active casks, a higher percentage went into that batch to make up the volume. So is that a little bit better? Is it a lot better? No, it's marginally better. But a marginal betterment of a whiskey makes a huge, huge difference. When you're sitting there in your third or your fourth glass, nosing and tasting and mulling it over, and asking yourself, did I pay the right price for this? Do I feel that I got good value? Am I still getting good value now that I'm getting through the bottle? The other consistency that distillers are, I think, making a mistake about is the consistency of continuity of absolute presentation in which they are sacrificing quality of flavour. So that you have a bottle of whiskey which looks like the last one you bought, smells a bit like the last one you bought, tastes a bit like the last one you bought, but something's changed and you can't quite put your finger on it and it takes a few glasses before you have that eureka moment and suddenly become aware of it. You've got a gradual batch variation. Now with batch variations, you get the extreme variations. One good batch followed by a rotten batch, a bad batch, a bad batch so poor, you wonder why they actually bottled it. And I'll tell you why the distillers bottle poor batches. Because they know eventually they'll sell it because uninformed customers will buy it not knowing any better. Because when a bad batch comes in the market, the, the grapevine online and Reddit and Facebook Wherever you're for, wherever you're getting your information, we'll be very quick to tell you. So distillers believe, quite rightly at the moment, although that's beginning to change because of online visibility of these practices, that they can get away with a bad batch, so they'll see a group of, of underactive casks in the corner of the warehouse and they'll just say, ah, just bung them into the next batch. Just get it out of our, get, get it out of our way. Go and burn the casks. You can do that in a blend when you're producing tens, if not hundreds of thousands of bottles in a batch. But you cannot do that in single malt whiskey. I guarantee you, I'm just telling you because you need to know this. You already know this, but I'm going to remind you. People who drink blended Scotch whiskey, no way do they spend as much time and as much commitment to their time and as much passion and precision to analysing and connecting with the smells and tastes, that is down to the single malt drinkers. Totally, absolutely. You go to the auction houses, which are the bottles of whiskey that everybody really, really, really wants to buy as an investment? Blended whiskey? No. No. Sure. A few obscure bottlings of Johnny Walker. Deco, for example, yeah, it's got its place in the market. But you look at the top of the list, all single malts, all Japanese single malts, not Japanese blends, single malts. 
This is an important part of the journey is when you're going along moving from the unknown towards the known and part of the value and importance of me sitting here on my fat arse in the bothy banging the barrel telling you all this stuff is to help you with your journey so you arrive at your destination sooner having made fewer financial mistakes that's why after 12 years as an online reviewer I still appear to be relevant and I'm happy to still be providing that information and helping you with your journey. I tell you what Malt makes, it is a journey, life's a journey. The purpose of life is to experience the journey. Time, time is the dimension that separates events. There you go. Shall we thought for the day? I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, click subscribe. I do have a Patreon channel. You might want to join me there. You'll be made most welcome. I have a big announcement coming up on my channel. And um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I think I've said that. And click the like, likey, likey thumbs up. And if you don't like it, that's fine. Um, you know, still showing your care if you press dislike. That's, that's absolutely fine by me. Not an issue. <laughs> You take care of yourself, malt mates, and keep it quality, not quantity. And I'll always be here to help you with that. See you soon.